I grew up in a small town in Montana. We lived in a two-story house on five acres and nothing but forest behind us. I remember one evening, my mom, my sister, and I were downstairs, and we had this TV. It was a brick of a thing. It was, you know, twice as long as it was tall and wide with a tiny little screen, and we had these rabbit ear antennas with a little dial that plugged into the back of the TV. And if you got that thing tuned just right, I mean, it was an art. You could get two channels, like a history and a news channel or something. And this particular evening, we're down there. My mom's trying to get it, you know, a good signal and it's not working, so we got it one side of the room, and the other side of the room, and then it's up by the window. Next thing you know, we're outside, and we got those antennas out the window, and my mom's wrapping tin foil around the top. At this point, I'm like five years old, so I'm not being terribly helpful, but I'm following around wherever we go, you know? And I'm standing there watching them, and in the corner of my eye, I remember seeing movement, and I look to my left, and there's a bear. And all the alarms in my five-year-old brain are going off at this point. And I see the bear climbing over this wire fence that divides our property line with the neighbors. It drops into our property. And I look at my mom and sister. I look back at the bear. I look at my mom and sister, look back at the bear, and I suddenly feel this urge to warn my family of this impending doom. And so I, I, I get close and I say, No reply, no, you know, dramatic lunge for the window or thank you for saving us, Ryan, nothing. So I do it again. Hey, Mom, there's a bear. Still nothing. So I look back at the bear, now closer than it was before. Look at my mom, my sister, and then my eyes rest on the front door of the house. Made my choice, I bolted for that front door, I slammed it behind me and hid in the coat closet there in the entryway. I remember sitting there for a minute or two. Then I hear my mom's voice, my sister's voice. I said something about a camera and then they went back outside. If you know someone is in danger and they don't know it, you don't just whisper. If you're in a burning building and you know there's other people in there, what do you do? You yell fire, you knock on every door and every wall. If someone's asleep, you shake them and say, wake up, you gotta get out of here, there's a fire. It doesn't matter who they are, if they're tall or short or young or old, what religion, race or gender, doesn't matter. You tell them. And some people are gonna to jump to their feet and help you in sounding the alarm. Other people you're gonna look dead in the eye, you're gonna say there's a fire, you gotta get out of here. And all they're gonna do is look back at you. I don't smell any smoke. But you tell everyone. Because when you stand back and you watch that house collapse in on itself and you're safe, at least you can say I tried. I did what I could. Friends, it's time to stop whispering. It's not mom, there's a bear. It's mom, there's a bear. You live in a burning building. And there's people sleeping in here. And it's just a matter of time before that ceiling caves in and it's all too late. But while there's still time, what are you gonna do?